Well, hello, beloved friends. Glad you're here for our devotions, daily devotions, uh, Tuesday through Friday on this channel. And I hope that uh, they're a blessing to you. And I hope you don't just take this as you're reading, that you would continue to read. Read more. Read a chapter a day. Chapter a day keeps the devil away. Or more. Read as much as you like. And uh, really get in. Dig into the Word and get all that you can out of it. We're talking this week about manna and some lessons we learned from the um, account of the Israelites eating manna in the wilderness. And I've come up with a, a few here that we'd like to look at. And um, the one I want to look at today is the idea of complaining about what you have. It's not always what we want, but it's always what we need very often. And years ago, I heard somebody talking uh, to a child and they said, you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. And I always kind of like that little rhyme. You get what you get and you don't throw a fit. And I try to apply it to myself, although sometimes it's a difficult thing to, to do. As you know, it's very hard to accept sometimes not only our lot in life, but that we're not getting, getting it exactly the way we want it. And um, the people that complained about that in relation to the manna, ooh, it angered the Lord. So we're going to look at this here in... Numbers chapter 11, kind of a little bit of an extended passage, but to get the feel of it and the anger that it brought up in the Lord, beginning of verse 1 says, And the people complained in the hearing of the Lord about their misfortunes. And when the Lord heard it, his anger was kindled, and the fire of the Lord burned among them and consumed some outlying parts of the camp. Wow, I'm just going to say, if you would highlight that and memorize that part of the verse, probably go a long way in helping contentment, right? So he says, uh, then, the, then the people cried out to Moses, and Moses prayed to the Lord, and the fire died down. So the name of that place was called Tibera, because the fire of the Lord burned among them. Now the rabble that was among them had a strong craving, and the people of Israel also wept again and said, oh, that we had meat to eat. We remember the fish we ate in Egypt. It cost nothing. The cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic but now our strength is dried up, and there is nothing at all but this manna to look at. Here's the manna. Now the manna was like coriander seed, and its appearance was like that of delium. The people went about and gathered it and ground it in hand mills or beat it in mortars and boiled it in pots and made cakes of it. And the taste of it was like the taste of cakes baked with oil. And when the dew fell upon the camp at night, the manna fell with it. Moses heard the people weeping throughout their clans, everyone at the door of his tent, and the anger of the Lord blazed hotly, and Moses was displeased. And Moses said to the Lord, Why have you dealt ill with your servant? And why have I not found favor in your sight that you lay the burden of all this people on me? Did I conceive this people? Did I give them birth that you should say to me, Carry them in your bosom as a nurse carries a nursing child to the land that you swore to give their fathers? Where am I to get meat to give all these people? For they weep before me and say, Give us meat that we may eat. I'm not alone. I'm not able to carry all this people alone. The burden is too heavy for me. If you will treat me like this, kill me at once. If I find favor in your sight, that I may not see my wretchedness. Oh my, my, my. <laughs> kill me now, Lord. It's just getting to be too much. <laughs> That's uh, a frustrated servant, isn't it? That poor man. I I don't know. I, I read about Moses sometimes and I have so much pity for him. And then you read also about how his older brother and sister, they felt jealous over him. And he was, you talk about long suffering. That man, Moses, was a long suffering man. But he had to put up with all these people complaining all the time. And the manna came and they were just so upset that that's all they had to eat. And as I mentioned yesterday, you know, they had come out of Egypt where things had been given to them. They were basically treated like children. They were completely dependent on their masters. They did not know what it was to be um, sort of uh, take, to take care of themselves. They didn't know what it was to really mature and to um, govern themselves as a people, let alone their own needs. They just were told what to do and they did it and the master fed them. And they had a variety. And, you know, who's going to complain if you got 
cucumbers and fish and leeks and garlic. I mean, it sounds like it'd be a pretty good meal. And then you look out and you see the manna and you say, oh, that just tastes like a cake baked in oil. And for them, you know, it was really just like dust in their mouth. It should have been sweet to them. They should have enjoyed it, but they couldn't find any way to enjoy this. Wish they had some more meat. They had quail at the very beginning, but now they don't have anything but manna. But the manna was their daily bread. This was the thing that sustained them. This is the thing that held them through. And they shouldn't look back and see what they had before. The whole idea of the manna was the idea to think, okay, we're only in the wilderness for a short time. God's providing for us. He's bringing us to a land flowing with milk and honey. So these are just your rations for a short time. That was the idea of it. And when they got to the promised land and they saw the produce of the land, they were afraid to go in because of the giants. And then it was manna for 40 years, but it was only supposed to be for a short time. And they were complaining about the short time that they were supposed to have it. It was their own fault for doing this. It was that they, they brought it on themselves that it was the long-term 40-year dinner. And I, I read this and I think there's a lesson here, isn't there? Sometimes we go through difficulty or sometimes we suffer want in some regard. And it may just be for a short time, and it may just be to get us over to the next thing. And if we could just get the right mindset that not to complain about our circumstances where we're at right now, but to accept them with grace, to thank the Lord, not to burden other people with them, certainly not to burden the people that are over you. Uh, poor Moses, you know, he, he drove him to the brink of suicide practically. I mean, he wasn't going to kill himself, but he was ready for death because of their own complaining. And if we could hold back and say, look, we're not going to complain about what we have. We know it may be for a short time. We've got to, you know, tighten our belts, bite the bullet, whatever you want to say, get through it. There's better things to come. And we've talked about this before. You know, the scripture says that the Lord works all things together for the good of those that love him and are called according to his purpose. And if we recognize that the purpose is greater, the end is going to be greater, we may have to go through it for a short time or a long time, doesn't matter, accept what it is without complaining, without making other people's lives miserable and say, this is my lot in life and that's okay. And if the Lord gives it, and if the Lord has sent something to us, then we need to turn and give him the thanks for it. It may not be exactly to our taste or our liking, but the people who it wasn't their taste, look what he calls them. He calls them the rabble. These are the, these are the people that are just the troublemakers. And God deals with troublemakers in a very harsh way. And so he dealt with them, he dealt with these people, dealt with them because of their cowardice. This whole, this whole long history of what these people went through from the time uh, Moses came off the mountain and met them in Egypt, led them to the promised land, led them in the wilderness, led them back to the promised land, and then Joshua conquered the land. It is so instructive for all of us as we read it. And we were really short-sighted if we just read it and say, well, that was them, that was their history. These are the things that we need to read and say, what lesson can I learn from this? How can I apply it to my life? And I think in the manna here, in the story of the complainers, we've probably got a lot we can learn there. I know I certainly do. I by no means reached perfection in my walk with the Lord, but I'm just living every day trying to live for the Lord, trying to follow Jesus, and it's a, it's a lifelong discipline. While I'm going through it, I need to learn the lessons of contentment, I need to learn the, the lessons of gratitude, and I need to learn the lessons of um, quieting my own spirit in order to be <laughs> palatable to the people around me. So that's a lesson I've got. Hopefully that's something you can apply to your life. Father, we're so thankful for your word. I thank you every day for this word, and we are thankful every day. And Father, the easiest thing in the world to do is complain. We know that. But Father, as your people, we don't want to be complainers. We want to be people with gratitude. But Father, I know sometimes people are going through some very difficult things. So many people go through loss and heartache, and physical, terrible pain. People go through seasons of want, hunger, they're 
brothers and sisters around the world who are going through persecution. But Father, help us to see that we're working towards something better and that you're with us in every one of these trials. And that Father will take what we get and we won't throw a fit. And we'll just give you the praise and the blessing for whatever we have and whatever we face this day. In Jesus' name. Well, that's all I've got for you today. Let's not be grumblers, right? I mean, I could tell myself that. Just an easy thing to be a grumbler and a griper and complainer. Instead, let's uh, not just put on a happy face, but to really be thankful. And when you're thankful, your attitude will start to change. All right, Lord willing, we'll see you here tomorrow. Have a great day in the Lord.